For students heading off to college this year or submitting applications, this is not an easy time, certainly not a time any of us anticipated, but resiliency is key, according to the experts. We asked certified education consultant Terry Thompson for her best tips as students navigate the college application process, and also my dog Pip joined the conversation. Everything is different. I think that the biggest problem for the seniors this year, the ones who had already submitted all their applications, then they found out where they got accepted in April, and some of them were planning to go visit those schools. Maybe they hadn't seen them yet, and the schools were shut down, airplane travel was canceled, everything was crazy. So the students weren't really able to see those schools. They often decided to go somewhere closer to home. What has happened with ACTs and SATs? I've heard there are some schools who aren't going to consider that this time around, or they're changing the way they examine students. Yes. Um, ACTs and SATs were also canceled this spring, which meant that the students literally couldn't get a chance to take tests. And colleges responded by saying, it's not fair for students to have to take a test that is not being offered. So many schools, including the UW, uh, Western, the um, University of California schools like UCLA, have all gone test optional. But I do want to stress that that doesn't mean that students should apply test optional. I think students should still try to take the tests. The um, SAT has added an extra date in the fall. The ACT has added three extra dates in the fall. So students should be able to get a test in the fall if they want. Okay. I know there are also summer activities that a lot of kids plan so that they can kind of add to their qualifications and maybe inform the school that they're doing those things. And now those things have been canceled. So how would you counsel those students about what to do? Summer activities are um, really interesting. I've spoken with several college admissions reps about this, and across the board, they say to kids, relax. This is an unusual year, and we just can't expect kids to do things that aren't there. So the normal activities that they would have done, like lifeguarding or working at summer camp or doing that cool research project, those just don't exist right now. Instead, kids get to do things that are more reflective or introspective. They get to do some fun things at home. There are some ways to do some volunteer work. One of my favorites is, um, for those of you who live in Seattle, they have these little free libraries dotting all our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Well, somebody came up with this great idea to come up with little free pantries, putting food in for those. And so um, high school students are building these pantries, these little boxes. They're stocking them. They're donating or getting um, donations to fill them. And uh, it's, a, it's really interesting. Students are also doing things like making um, cookie dough and freezing it and then giving it to homeless shelters so that they can have fresh baked cookies. They are taking online classes. There's these great things called MOOCs, which is massive open online courseware. Basically, online courses from real colleges, but they're completely free. And you can do anything from something practical like programming in Python to something really fun like the future of storytelling or the science yeah. of cooking just to get your brain active and get mm -hmm. ready for school. So I know some students are talking about deferring or you know, just not going to school this year, one or the other. Um, what, what does that look like? What should they consider? So first of all, colleges are always open to deferrals and they were afraid that they were going to get a lot of deferrals this year because uh, everybody is saying, I thought I was going to go to college and be able to go to football games and all the right. traditional college things. And now college looks different this fall. But surprisingly, most students are not deferring. And the reason is that there isn't much to do if they do defer. Everything is shut down. Yep. They can't go trek in Nepal. They can't work on a ranch in Australia or an orphanage in South America. So all those things that they usually do aren't available. So they might as well go to college and get some of those general ed requirements out of the way. You know, it's a tough choice because college isn't going to be the same, but a year off isn't going to be the same either. So we're just going to be going through this. Do you have any idea, um, what do you tell students about how long to expect things to be so different? Ah, oh, that's the million dollar <laughs> question. So 
everybody is watching Harvard right now to see what Harvard's going to do for the fall. And Harvard has been leaning toward being mostly online, yeah. which means a lot of other colleges are going to follow if that's the case. Many colleges are going to have a hybrid of some online, some in-person classes. Colleges have decided that those big lecture hall classes, that they don't need to do those in person. They might as well have that be online for sure. And then that frees up that space so that they can put a regular class in one of those big hall lecture halls and students can sit six feet apart. So there's a lot of different things, but as far as how much time it's going to take, who knows? And if we have a second wave or, you know, tough stuff in the winter, the spring semester might be different too. So I guess we're just going to have to be patient. Right. And colleges are trying to plan that if the students do come to school in the fall, that they might have to send them home um, at a moment's notice. So they're telling the professors to be ready to go um, completely online if you need to. Right. 